Hello, hello everyone and welcome to the most consulted game dev podcast in the world. Today I have with me, as usual, my co-host Rune. Up, up, up. <laughs> and also we have a guest. Hello. <laughs> Let's kick the doors open and find out what's inside this week's House of Games. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this week's episode. Today, as I mentioned, we have with us a guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Anton. I'm your brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, what a I, twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I make, uh, on my free time, I make uh, games or one game with you. I'm responsible, in air quotes, for the graphics. And what graphics they are. Very good. <laughs> absolutely, they're amazing. Yes, absolutely. I'm really glad to have you here. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. And uh, before we start talking about games, I would like to have a shameless self-promotion and tell you more about our progress in the podcast so far. So last time, I think we mentioned how many listeners we have. I think we were up to 50 listeners and now, when I look at the numbers, I just want to give a shout out and thank you to everyone who's listening. So right now we are at about 350. So quite oh. a uh, yeah, quite a good track record so far. And also, when we started this podcast, we, as you can expect in the beginning, you have some days where you have people who listen and some days where you have nobody who listens. But since the 11th of January, we have not had a single day where nobody has listened. So thank you everyone for listening every day to this podcast. So yeah. hopefully we can keep pushing upward and see if we can do even better in the future. And something else also that I mentioned last time was that in the last couple of days, we also have had new countries join our audience. So uh, just to name drop, the ones that are currently in our following is uh, Sweden, the US, Switzerland, Germany, Canada, United Kingdom, India, Japan, the Netherlands, Australia, Austria, Italy, Norway, France, Denmark and Poland in descending order. So thank you everyone from around the world for listening to us. Really, really fun. And uh, today I think... I think the theme will be something like stories or the setting for games and what we we like about them and appreciate about them. And I think one thing that divides the three of us a little bit is story and its importance. So I can go <laughs> and uh, talk for, uh, for my own sake. I think story is something that is really essential part for games. In comparison to, for example, movies or books or anything like that, games are interactive, which makes stories more alive. For example, Last of Us and Shadow of the Colossus, you have a story that is sort of essential to the whole thing. Like, without it, it would just be... I don't know what it would be. Anton, you're quite opposed, I suppose. Yes, I am. I can just start by saying that I'm very happy that there is a Last of Us show because I will never play that game and the show so far is very good. So I'm very happy about that. So why will you not play that game? Because it's so story heavy and I find that unnecessary and boring. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how to explain it, but when, when I play games I do not want a story. If there is, I don't know, a game where there's some story but the like core core identity of the game is not the story i just skip all the cutscenes i don't think i've ever seen a cutscene in my life <laughs> unless oh my unless i was a kid and <laughs> when i was oh. a kid maybe i watched you play and then i had to see a cutscene but if i choose i never see them at all i find them annoying oh before we started the show i said i was on your team anton that i don't have <laughs> stories either but i am i am going back to oro now what well, guys <laughs> skip the cutscenes <laughs> I just find them unnecessary. It's like 
if I'm playing chess, I don't want someone to tell me a story about <laughs> how the pawn ended up at g4. I just want to play chess. <laughs> but I imagine, like, say, for example, we talked a little bit off screen about uh, Hogwarts Legacy, that you said that you wish that there is no story to the game. <laughs> so I'm just uh, <laughs> guessing, wouldn't it be, like, confusing to play it and then... Like you skipped all of the cutscenes and all of a sudden you're supposed to do something or you have a quest or something and it says something like talk to this person because of this and you don't understand who anyone is in the scenario. <laughs> well, usually in games with quests, I don't follow along at quests at all. I just do what I'm supposed to do and then I get the reward. Oh, so you have to go here and press E, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't care. And follow the minimap. Nowadays, a lot of games just do that with a minimap. And I love the minimap. Just go there. Boom. Done. <laughs> For example, Hogwarts Legacy. Amazing game. I like Harry Potter, so... Not played it, but it looks like an amazing game. <laughs> but I'm just curious, why would it be a fun game if there is no story? <laughs> I don't know how it will be for me. I will probably play for three hours and then I will get bored. But uh, <laughs> okay. if if there were no story, there would be, I don't know, magic stuff you can do. Just flying around in the broomstick would be nice. It's like mm. the Spider-Man game. Play that. So is there a game that you could give as an example where there is very little story that you do enjoy and play a lot of? Right now it's Squad. So what is that for those who don't know? I would say it's more like a mill sim than a game. You play 64 versus 64, I think. So is it an FPS or a strategy game or...? FPS. You have guns and you shoot people. And there's no story. So is that... Would you say that is sort of the same as doing DDoS 2 in Counter-Strike or...? Yeah, but more... PTSD. You, <laughs> what? I don't know, you get more immersed and you die easier. So tell me about immersion, because that to me would be a type of storytelling. Yeah, loud explosions, a lot of gunfire, <laughs> people all around, I don't know, people screaming, that kind of stuff. The story in those cases are like, are usually the, I mean, the experience you're having. Maybe you play with friends and stuff. I don't know. It's it's kind of like uh, you know those. What's a good example of that type of game that doesn't have a story, but the experience. I don't know. Like the journey, I suppose. It's not really a story there, but a lot of people are having a hell of a good time playing the game, or like the the overall experience is the story. Yeah, I guess more like that in life in general. I don't like talking. <laughs> Talking, no, but I don't, you don't like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> don't like I, the I story don't... of your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I try to. Skip so I hate everything. all. So I so I just hate all yeah. stories. You know, you go to... in your life is a cell phone or or a phone call. You just skip it every time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Meetings at work, skip it. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, a meeting. Skip, skip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where were we? I like stories and I like, I like movies and I like shows and I think they should be separated. So I think before we continue, I think we should maybe separate or dissect the concept of story. So I think some people would at least argue that storytelling could include the setting of a game. So say for example that you have a game that is set during the Second World War. That is a piece of story in the game. But then you have also more explicit story where you have dialogue and you have quests and you have fictional books in the game universe and stuff. And as far as I understand, it's not that you hate all the story because then you would just have games where you had just cubes that don't describe anything. <laughs> so there is some stories that is fine as I understand it. And then there's more explicit stuff where it's too much, I think. So where would you draw the line? Because at some level you do appreciate it. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, probably. But uh, I would say dialogue. Yeah. Especially if it's unskippable. But 
there's a preset that that's fine like oh you are a soldier okay yeah that's fine do whatever you want kill the enemy like a story setting yeah yeah like like chess has the same thing. <laughs> this is a pawn yeah someone told you that it's a pawn and this is a queen yeah i don't mind that but i don't know when i have to follow dialogue or when i have to read text or <laughs> i don't know so what would you say about skyrim because that you have a dialogue and stuff so there you're able to walk away from any dialogue at any time so what is your approach with a game like that i skip everything i can and <laughs> fight people <laughs> 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 yeah but it it like it depends on what type of game it is and what the gameplay is i would say like i play skyrim to kill monsters only and get cool gear like i want to have a cool guy that kills enemies <laughs> that's it that's that's my like what i get out of it but if it's like i don't know okay it's gonna be the same thing but if it's rome total war which i've played a lot as well I would say actually it's the same, it's the battles I like. <laughs> Some strategy is fun, but more like the tactical part. So have you played any of the Half-Life games? Yes, one of them. Which one? I don't know. <laughs> what was the graphics like? Was it like the 90s graphics or more recent? Um, it was... <laughs> I don't remember. Either way, they're, they're the same. <laughs> You skipped the whole game. Yeah, it, I, I think it was 1.6. <laughs> According 1. to my 6. argument, the actual Half-Life game doesn't matter as long as you played one of them, I suppose. So in Half-Life, you also have dialogue, but it doesn't take up your focus as a character. You don't even have to look at or listen to the guy. You just go from essentially from the start of the game to the end of the game and shoot everything in sight until you win. So, and that has a lot of story, I would say, but it's non-intrusive. So, what was your experience in whichever Half-Life game you played? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do remember it as sometimes you're stuck in a room and they're talking to you and you can't do anything but, like, jump and look around. Yes, that's Mm. true. Yes, and I don't like that. So you're forced to listen to them. You can't just run away (laughs) towards the enemy. You, You can't Leroy Jenkins it. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that's better. The worst thing that there is is cutscenes. What about uh, Call of Duty games, for example? The story is sort of in the loading scene, loading the level slash it's over a walkie-talkie. You prefer that? Yeah, it would be better if it was just quiet, but mm. <laughs> it does not interrupt me as well as much. I don't have to pick up my phone because I'm bored. Yeah. So have you never had like a game where you had a story that you did appreciate? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Must have been sometime, I suppose. I'm looking through my Steam. No, not your Steam right now. Look look through your mind. <laughs> it's no. sounds like we're having an intervention now. <laughs> <laughs> I believe i have undiagnosed adhd <laughs> or something because i cannot focus but it's usually just in games like talking to people and watching a movie is fine i don't mind oh, that's so weird like i hate watching movies because i g- get bored out of my mind but i prefer if i want to have a story i, I want to play a game that's uh totally opposite here yeah that's kind of cool let's say you were playing football mm. and <laughs> this fucking in the... again <laughs> And the the coach in the middle of, or the judge or whatever, in the middle of the game just pauses it and tells you a story about why <laughs> you are running there and why you would need to score and what happens if you score. Would that make it better? <laughs> or like, <laughs> like, would you feel more immersed in football? Or uh, I don't know. At this point, I think that would be pretty awesome. Oh. What a twist. <laughs> Yeah, that w- it would be a twist, but... Yeah, maybe it's like the referee, like... And everyone has to sit around in a circle like little children in a kindergarten. And then like, <laughs> yeah. start telling them a story. Uh, yeah, but that's... That, that, that's... Hmm. Nah, that, I wouldn't like that. I, I can sort of see... Like, I believe I'm in the same sort of ADHD, undiagnosed group as you. But... Because I can sort of see what you're saying at times when they, like... 
when you say you just want to play a game. And I have actually started, I have sort of become like that recently. I, I told you guys before we started recording, like, I'm so into these uh, really hard uh, From Software games, or The Surge is another title. I started playing Neo, it's a ninja ish game. It's also that sort of difficult game. And I don't care about the story in those games. Here I just want to play. And what I really appreciate with these games is that they don't even bother with tutorials or anything in the beginning. So they just throw you straight into the game and then you start. Yeah, killing monsters and leveling up, progressing, and they're very skill-based. You guys have probably heard, but you know, when, when you kill the bosses in these games, it's just what a kick you get out of it, because you maybe try it 15 times, and eventually you kill the boss, and you just, your heart is just like bouncing like crazy, like bum 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 bum. It's really intense, so I really love those games for that. But before I started playing these from software games, I was all about story-driven games, like all the um, uh, the Uncharted games. I think the Uncharted one was maybe the one that really sort of made me care so much about storytelling in games. So all the Uncharted games, The Last of Us, and I would play anything with a story. And I was really like trying to get into the story as well when I played these games. But then after playing Bloodborne, I stopped caring. And even like God of War, the remake, was I loved it, but... Since then, I have sort of ruined myself with these Bloodborne type games. So even now, I I, I kind of want to play Ragnarok, the, le- the the latest one. But at the same time, I know it's gonna be this sort of story game, and it's not gonna be like the Bloodborne game. But I'm totally ruined. Like I only want to play these types of Bloodborne games now, which uh, I, I hope I get out of it eventually because uh, I just bought this Steam Deck and. I don't know what to play on it unless I, once I'm done with Elden Ring and Neo. Some of my first memories from story driven games, that was obviously Metal Gear Solid and uh, the Final Fantasy games. But it was on English back then, so I didn't quite understand the story, especially in Final Fantasy. But I do remember, you know, these cutscenes, the pre rendered cutscenes. That was always awesome to reach those. It felt like a reward that you have played this. Even though the games looked awesome back then, but you know, comparing to the CG videos, the graphics were shit, and then you get rewarded with this uh, pre rendered video, and that was uh, felt really rewarding and awesome. And that's sort of like how I had to use my imagination to sort of understand what the story was about because I didn't understand any of it when I read the dialogues. That's cool. Well, I would say I can agree with you a little bit that. It sort of disconnects you from the game if you play a game where the story interrupts the gameplay. So one thing that I absolutely hate is when you play a game with a tutorial. And before you can start the game, there's a tutorial. Like the worst example is when a tutorial, there's like a 4 billion pop-ups that you have to read and then close and it doesn't teach you how to do it even it just tells you like in text and you won't remember these 45 key combinations later because you don't know when it's appropriate and then you have those that are a little bit better but still bad that you have like a demo level but you can't do like all of the stuff that you would be able to do in the full game and then you just have to play for two hours before you can just start For example, if you play like an open world game and then it takes like two hours to get to the open world before that, you just can't go anywhere. That also annoys me. And also in some games where like the story is too much that there's like no balance. So there's only story. For example, walking simulators are like something I really hate because they try to tell a story, but the story is all that there is to it. So I just don't get why it's even a game. You could just made a, an audiobook and that would have been, been better. So I do get that, but let's flip it around a little bit. So Anton, would you be able to tell us with the movies and TV shows and stuff where there is story that you do like and you are excited about, what makes that exciting? I do not know. <laughs> the Last of Us is a good example, I think. I like that story, and I'm currently watching it as it comes out. Why do you like it? I like survival stuff, I think, in general, as long as it's not repetitive. 
as some survival shows become. Yeah, but so the question would be then that if you would have like a movie without story, for example, in a survival setting, then the whole movie would be just one hour long fight scene between like a guy and zombies and stuff. So then why is story important? What does that add to the experience? On that note, I I would say that I hate fighting scenes in movies. Yeah, me too. Because they add absolutely nothing. I think, once again, why you should separate it, separate story in games and in movies and stuff, is because of that. Because in shows and movies, like if I see someone fighting, I can just roll the dice, or they can just say Ben won, or something like that. I, I don't care who won, or like how they won. They're gonna win, I know that. It doesn't add any value. Yeah, I actually told my wife last time we watched a movie. We really suck at watching movies because we both get bored easily. <laughs> but especially fighting scenes. I was like, God damn it, I hate fighting scenes. We know he's going to win anyway. It, it's just like filling it out. But I do think there are like people who enjoy watching the fighting scenes because they think it looks cool, I guess. But I am totally with you. I, I think it adds nothing to the movie or the, the series or anything. I wish there was just no fighting at all. They just... Or make it more natural, like how it would be a real fight. You sort of throw a punch at each other and knock someone out like that. You know, that's how a real fight usually works. But in these films, they just drag out for like 10 minutes and pick up tables. And yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, I suppose there's a fight art to it. And, you know, people are into it. But I... No, I, I agree. Let me bring two counterpoints to that. So... First, there's the movie They Live, which has a fighting scene which is, I think, modeled after how a actual fight would be. So it's sort of clumsy and it's sort of all over the place and there's no cool moves and there's... As a fighting scene, it's sort of boring, I think, but that's one example to check out if you want one that's more down-to-earth, I suppose. But I would say that sometimes in movies the fight scenes can become a essential part of the story if done right. So in the movie Gladiator from 2000, the fighting scenes are absolutely part of the story and it would not be the same movie without it if they just skipped over it. Because it in part it tells us, spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen this 23-year-old movie, but... The main character is very good at fighting, and so of course he wins all of the fights. But in one of the scenes, there's is fighting together with other gladiator slaves. And he wins, of course, through teamwork with the other slaves. And some of them die like instantaneously because they have no experience. And it uh, sort of tells us more, not only that he's good at fighting, but it, that he sort of is not... Uh, like he's good at fighting and he doesn't care about anyone else instead he has like compassion for people and he he's sort of a good guy and he's uh, also smart and stuff and all of that is like packed into the action of the scene in the story i agree gladiator is a good example for when it's actually necessary and it's a, a good compartment of the movie and i think the sort of parallel i'm trying to draw here is that fighting scenes in movies is sort of like what you describe story to be in games. So for many people also, fighting scenes can seem like a an interruption of what you're doing. Because you're enjoying the story and then comes this long 10 minute fight scene and you can just skip past it and you can just get a summary and then you move on. And the same, I guess, is for you with stories that they say something like, oh, you have to help me kill X number of wolves or whatever it is, and there's some story about a lost boy or something, and you can feel that you can just skip over it and then just get the summary. And what I'm trying to do is that you, if you execute it right, I think there would be room for story that you would enjoy. I, I'm open for it, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Maybe, but... That game also needs to quickly get my attention. 
which I think is hard. Because I, I see it kind of like you said earlier about the walking simulator. I feel that The Last of Us, I played it for 5-10 minutes, I don't know, is a just long walking simulator. <laughs> with Like, in a walking simulator you can walk in this game. In The Last of Us, you add four more buttons for to jump and shoot and I don't know what else you can do, but the rest is a walking history. And those who are like a game with cutscenes, like it's mostly about the gameplay, then it's just like a big, long commercial that you have to skip. <laughs> I agree also with sort of comparing The Last of Us to a walking sim, but I also think that has to do with, just like games are just getting so easy nowadays, especially this triple a super expensive to make games are just so friendly user friendly and easy that it's i sort of agree with you that it is like a walking sim and if you die it just takes you back like a, a minute or so because there are checkpoints everywhere and all that stuff and i think personally that's why i love these uh, from software games they sort of gone back to the old school when it's like a proper punishment from dying and that's something I, I miss with the, with games. But then again, it's if, if you have a story-driven game and then you die and it takes you back 30 minutes or something, that story bits would then lose its value next time around you reach them because you've already seen them just over and over again if you keep dying, let's say. So yeah, that that's another th- weird thing with uh, story-driven games as opposed to... It, it feels like they almost have to be quite easy to to get through. I'm not sure where I was going with that, but... My conclusion to this would be that, Anton, you said that we should separate story and games, but I think that is the sort of issue to begin with that make them boring for you. Because if you separate them, then you have a section with fun gameplay, and then you have a section with story. And if you instead would merge them so that they're simultaneous with each other so say for example you would have a game like squad and then all around you the story would happen and the gameplay doesn't stop or even lose tempo you can just keep playing and then pay attention to whatever you want and that way you might be able to experience the story even though you're not paying that much attention and even enjoy it because it it doesn't automatically mean that you lose something because that there is story if you understand what i mean yeah i understand and i think that's a good way to get everybody to enjoy a story in a game or not if they don't want to but i think i think the separation should be like stories are in movies and tv shows and games are just games <laughs> like the last of us very good show so far but Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's also a game with the story happening when you play it. Yeah. There are some cutscenes as well, maybe, but the story keeps going during gameplay. Yeah, that's actually quite nice, that game. I think that happens while you play. They talk and stuff like that. Develop characters that way. But there are cutscenes in those games. And I used to love cutscenes because they would sort of take you out of the, the gameplay a little bit. And usually the graphics were more beautiful in the cutscenes and so on I thought but uh, nowadays games are just so damn good looking anyway so it lost a little bit of its charm I think never had any charm <laughs> <laughs> well I would say that The Last of Us has that exact thing I was talking about so that is even though that there's not that many cutscenes in comparison to how much gameplay there is there is still sections that are only gameplay where you can't die and there's no enemies and there's nothing like to do but to experience the story and so it's sort of part walking simulator until you get to a zombie section or a sneaking section or a whatever section and then there's just gameplay and not that much story and then you separate it into a calm period where there's walking and talking and so on so my point would be that if there would be sort of you have to be on your toes all the time and the story again would happen as you have only this gameplay section, then that would be more suitable to my brother, for example. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there's. Uh, it's hard for us to reconcile <laughs> this difference. 
But uh, what you say, we have uh, also part two of this argument that we could do about open worlds if we want to switch to that. Yeah. You want to start, Rune? Basically, I hate open world. I used to love it. So now it's my intervention here. But <laughs> well, I, when I played uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 on PlayStation 2, I was blown away by that. And then I played Vice City and then San Andreas. It was around that time it totally broke me, open world. Even though I have played Oblivion, Morrowind, Skyrim, Fallout 3 and Fallout Vegas. And like really done everything in these games. For some reason they grabbed me. But with all this new, like, I mean, Spider-Man, Horizon, these games, I, I just don't, I can't get into them. Or all the Far Cry games and so on. My problem is that I, this could have something to do with the fact that I also have a kid now, but I just don't have the time and I feel like I'm wasting time playing these types of games because they're so overwhelmingly big and I guess there's some OCD-ish that I don't want to just, I want to finish up one area before I go to the next one. I'm the same way when I play games in general, I never play two games at the same time, I'm done with one game and then I move on to the next one. So when I play these open world games, I feel like I have to do everything in in this first area before I move on to the next one. So by the time I get to the next area, so this happened when I played Far Cry 4 or 5, can't remember which one it was, in Himalaya, that, that one. And then you do all these side quests and they're so dull and just so samey. And then you sort of forgot the main story by the time you're done in this area and you go to the next area and then it's the same types of side quests there. And then you sort of progress a little bit in the story. But again, I keep forgetting what the story was because now I'm just running around doing all these mundane, boring side quests. But I can't not do them because I want to finish up this area before I go to the next one and so on and so on and so on. And the same thing happened when I played Horizon 1. Stop playing it after... And less than eight hours maybe and then I just ah fuck it I, I will never finish this game and also I, I'm bored of it because it's so samey with all these side quests but there is an example of a game that did it very well uh, and that's God of War and that would be in my opinion as open world as I want it so it's it's not necessarily open world but it's a little bit open world and when you go off the, the sort of main story there's these side quests and each one of them are unique so I, of course I know as a as a developer that th- this is really hard to make it like this that there because there's all these I mean when you play other open world game you know that they're using the same script the same functions to for example trigger the car chases in Spider-Man for example it's just the same script triggering a, a car chase but in different parts of the the city but anyway in God of War you never feel like there is those cheap tricks everything feels so uniquely crafted and made and even though you make these side story, side quest thingies, they still add to the main story, which I thought was really cool how it was made in God of War. And again, that open worldness is not too overwhelming. It's it's just like just right, I think. So that would be as open world as I want it. And I can tell with Elden Ring, so that's my favorite company from software who makes it. But I stopped playing it now because it's just... I, I I get that feeling again that it's just too overwhelming. There's too much stuff to do here. I really wish it wasn't an open world game. That it was just like you go from castle to castle and they're all linked with the tight, narrow pathways and all that beautiful level design they're doing from software. Or they're really good at that stuff. But unfortunately it is an open world game. So I used to end up getting up on my mount and then I run really fast to the next location and then of course I'm under leveled so the idea is that I should maybe you know explore a little bit and find some caves or whatever and find better gear and all that stuff but then I uh, at this point I don't even know where I'm supposed to go so yeah but yeah that's my take on open world I absolutely hate it don't want it I want uh, more narrow straightforward games ish any objections Yes. <laughs> ah. Mm, I uh, mostly play only open world, and I would say anything but open world is kind of like story-driven games, or they're they're usually are story-driven games when they're not open world. And I don't, 
I don't like being told where to go by a game. I want to feel the freedom at least. Like I might have an objective or whatever, or like a reason to play the game and a reason to go somewhere, but I don't like having to take this road or this way or climb over like this building to get there. Or I have to go inside this house and then there's walls inside the house. Makes me feel claustrophobic. And also it doesn't feel like a game that much. It feels more like a like a story or something. <laughs> Your definitions is all over the place. Yeah, I know. I don't know how how to define things, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that I know. Well, I guess the common denominator for the things you're describing is freedom, I guess. Yeah. So a story is something that will inhibit your freedom to do what you want when you want it. And I guess not having an open world does the same thing. So the most important thing then would be just to be unrestricted in whatever you want to do in a game. Yeah, I guess. That pretty much sums it up. <laughs> I have one more about Elden Ring, which I thought was pretty cool. So the story in those games is is always quite vague. You sort of have to read on items, and it's very cryptic. But the reason why I, I played the Elden Ring, I was going to wait and, until I got a PlayStation 5 and play it there, but I watched these YouTube videos. It's a very popular channel among Elden Ring fans, or from software fans. I forgot what his name is, though. But he basically... I, I, I watched some of his YouTube videos about Elden Ring, where he talk about the lore and the, the bosses and like how their names and why they do what they do and so on and the world and all that stuff and I was like man this sounds so awesome I have to play the game so that's one about Steam Deck and then I started playing Elden Ring on it and then as I'm playing it I uh, for example noticed these sort of slave-ish people digging around some ruins and stuff like that and then I just remembered from watching those YouTube uh, videos about the lore and all that stuff that I I knew, ah, they are digging because they're looking for this lost kingdom or whatever, as an example. So that was pretty cool to sort of see the story or listen to all the story beats from the game on, on YouTube and then actually play the game, which doesn't give you any story anyway. So that was pretty a cool experience as I was running around in that open world, being annoyed that, that it was an open world. But these things did sort of pop in once in a while where I... I knew that oh, those giants lying here dead are lying here because they were fighting this war with whatever the YouTube guy told me earlier. But that was a weird experience to have that in an open world game. I would say I like that as well. I like history and I play a lot of history games. So I would say that that becomes kind of the lore of the game, like the world's history. But it's always like fantasy things that actually happened in the world aha you like stories no <laughs> <laughs> or I, I, I like yeah may, maybe but I don't like them being forced on me right yeah I gotcha yeah I'm in the same boat now I think I don't like stories being forced on me right now but I do know that this is just uh, a phase I mean I think uh, I, I hope I get out of this phase and I go back to story driven games again because I want to play like God of War, but I know I'm not going to enjoy it while I'm in this phase. And the same thing with The, uh, the Last of Us 2. I didn't like it at all because, the, first of all, it was so long. I had no idea it was going to be that long. But I was not in that sort of story phase that I had was in b back in the day before From Software ruined me. But uh, I hope I I'll go back to play story-driven games again. I sort of miss it. On these topics, what do you think about the game Resident Evil 1? Because that has a story, but it's very non-intrusive and it's mostly gameplay. It is open world, but it's kind of small. So what are your opinions on that game if you played it? I love it. I love uh, that type. But you could also describe that as sort of like a Metrovania-ish game. And I love those games. And that's what I tried to say with the, about God of War. It's kind of like that. I mean, it's just bigger than Resident Evil, obviously. But it is kind of the same feeling I get and Resident Evil 1 and 2 as well I, I guess but yeah I love those games I, I would say uh, a mini open world 
that's what my next game is gonna be so that's uh, it's funny you b brought that up with resident evil and i never thought about it as a mini open world until just now that it, it it is open world yet it's just in one house but i think that one house have so much more character and so much more history so much story so much more attention to detail than all of horizon combined for example because it's just spread out forever and ever and ever while one house in resident evil feels so much more alive and i love that with games when when they do that a bit tighter more details and that's also from software again not to just keep ranting about them but demon souls and uh, dark souls and bloodborne for example the attention to detail is so beautiful it's like it feels like they have very you know brushed every section of the game with, with with details and you can sort of feel that the designers have been there and done stuff while playing horizon it's just like it feels like it's just generated by an ai the wilderness and then they have paid some more attention to certain parts of it like if you reach some hideout or whatever then obviously they have been worked on that but that stuff in between doesn't feel like there's no love there. It's just like to make it big. And A Short Hike is also a title that I would recommend for small open worlds that are still quite fun. So what would you say, Anton, about that game? Have you played Resident Evil 1? I don't know. I was going to ask you. Do you know if I've played it? <laughs> I think I've watched you play it. Yeah, so it's sort of the classic haunted house trope, except in a game. So you start off in a house, and there's zombies somewhere in the house, but not everywhere. And you have to basically get out of the house. It's the end goal. I think I've seen you play it, but I don't think I've played it myself. I like the Resident Evil games. We've played a lot of Resident Evil 5. Yeah, but those are completely different. So, yeah, I think we played Resident Evil, was it 6? The one when we are in some hillbilly house in Louisiana or in the sticks somewhere. And uh, then that one is the most similar to Resident Evil 1, I would say. Yeah, I think I like I remember Resident Evil One, but I don't, don't think I've ever played it. I think there's a dining room to the left when you enter the house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but I I don't think I played it, but I think I've seen you play it. How about uh, the sixth sixth? How do you say sixth? Sixth <laughs> entry. <laughs> no one knows. Resident Evil Six at any rate. At seven, I believe. No, seven is the one with the. The big lady, I guess. No, that's eight, Janai. Is that eight? Isn't that uh, yeah. seven? Because you have, uh, because it was called Resident Evil Seven Village, and the Roman numerals for seven becomes V I L L. I thought Resident Evil Six was the one that became very action oriented and sort of four stories in one. Oh right, that is true. Oh, right. Now that I'm uh, recalling, yeah. So V-I-L-L, -L, that becomes a five and three. So that's eight. Yeah, so seven. I meant the seventh one. Yeah, because there isn't even eight. I'm, I'm Googling it. Is <laughs> The big lady. That's the village. Mm. That's mm. village, yeah. yeah. And Resident Evil 7 is biohazard when you meet the Hillbilly family. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah, I liked it. Ish. Yeah, because that has a story, but it's very non-intrusive, I would say. Mm. Yeah, you have the cutscene in the beginning when he drives there. Yeah, and that's about it. Yeah. And then you have to like... Uh, yeah, that, that's a good story thing, because you... Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you pick up like tapes and stuff, and then they can talk. Like um, Bio... Are they called Biohazard? No. Biohazard is a Japanese name for Resident Evil. But I think you're talking about Bioshock. Bioshock, yeah, thank you. Bioshock is nice as well, because you can pick up the uh, tapes and then listen to them. Oh yeah, that's a good example, actually. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that is a lot, like I said before, that is a lot better. I never listen to the tapes at all, but it's good for people like you, <laughs> who like 
stories, then you can listen to them. Interesting. Yeah, well, then we have a, a compromise, I guess, <laughs> between us. Good. Yeah, I guess so. Very good. But yeah, Resident Evil, I like those games. Those are nice. But I never followed the story of them. I understand that there's zombies and you want to stop that somehow, but I never never listened to the story. Yeah, I get that. Very interesting. But uh, what did you do? Because I think you played Deadly Scrolls Oblivion quite a lot. Yeah. So that has like a very... You can't skip anything, or I guess you can, but... You're like yeah. sort of stuck in the stories. How did you play that one? If I remember correctly, I played it tons of times. You have to do the whole thing in the beginning when you choose your character. And then you get out of the... Are they called manholes? A manhole is horizontal. No, a vertical oh, okay. uh, entrance. So it's sewer. more of a sewer entrance, yeah. Yeah. When you get out of there, I just go and do my stuff and then I never played the story i did play the story once so what is your stuff in this scenario <laughs> i don't know level up kill things make things run around i don't know join a guild and skip the story and become the master of that guild so i think you would be you should look into speed running <laughs> i think that's your thing yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it looks cool speed running yeah because that is exactly, oh, well, if you just uh, jump and then turn down the brightness in this menu, then you jump and skip the whole game. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks nice. I've, I've watched some videos, but it f- I feel like it's too time consuming to get too good much at story. It. <laughs> too much story yeah. behind it. <laughs> no, but you, you, you have to, like, I don't know, but I think you have to either play it a lot and find things, or you have to study like maps and stuff well i think most of it is i think finding shit is part of it but usually i i'm not sure somebody could fact check me if i'm wrong on this but i think the ones who are the fastest aren't necessarily someone who finds like a bug or something but rather the ones who can practice executing them the best so somebody might find there's like look here's a bug or something and then they just uh, keep practicing day out and day in Mm. yeah i don't like that grind that much but speaking of uh, morrowind and oblivion those games i told you auto many times but i love those games that they allow you to literally just at least i know morrowind you can just go straight to the final boss like almost as soon as you start the game i think you need one key to get there but that, I think that's really cool, and it shows some sort of confidence in the game that you can just finish it straight away if you want, but they know that you're going to be in that world and explore. And I play the games quite similar to you, I think, that I tend to not care too much about the story, except when I joined the Dark Brotherhood. Those storylines I enjoyed and thought were interesting and fun because it's, you know... You get some information about the people you're going to assassin and all that. But, uh, for example, the Fighters Guild stuff, I couldn't care less. I did the same there. You sort of skipped all the dialogues just to start the quest. And then they had that sort of minimap where you see where you're going to go and all that stuff. Which I don't like nowadays, but I did that back then. Now I want games to be like the Elden Ring or uh, Breath of the Wild when it just doesn't tell you where to go. If it has to be an open world game. Which I don't like anyway, so... Hmm weird well i think we've uh, had a uh, interesting uh, discussion it would be interesting to see what our listeners think about this if you're listening to this please uh, let us uh, know what's your opinion about stories and open worlds in games on behalf of uh, everyone here uh, big apologies to all the game developers out there who's <laughs> poured their souls to make these cutscenes that some people just skip <laughs> I don't apologize <laughs> I want to be excluded in that apology <laughs> make less cutscenes <laughs> you, you didn't even hear what I said you skipped what I said <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, I did. I heard God, apology damn. and then uh, just mute the, the Discord call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I gotta say, uh, Odo, I as we were talking now, I just downloaded a short hike because I got it recommended. Yes, two days ago I went to this Tokyo meetup thing, and uh, I we I talked with a. a friend there who and i sort of told him about my next game which is a mini open world and he was like oh i'm sort of working on something like that too and then he told me about the short pack and now you mentioned it too so i just downloaded it on my steam deck and i'm gonna give it a go and that guy by the way i talked to he's gonna join us in a future episode where we're gonna talk about stuff so look forward to that very cool all right so anton any last words before we end the episode no i don't think so thank you for having me It's a fun topic to talk about. Absolutely, and you're most welcome back. Yes, thank you. that was fun. Yeah. All right, so thank you everyone for listening and thank you to Anton and Rune for joining me on this episode and we will see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.